the roads were bad, and every town, every village had its citizens with guns who stopped all travelers. Hi fellows, I'm Arash and I am reading A Tale of Two Cities to you, Chapter 7. As you already know, this story is published by Oxford Bookworm University, written by Charles Dickens. In the previous chapter, the revolution of France began, and now it continues. At the end of the previous chapter, the castle of Marquis was set on fire. The troubles in France continued. The citizens of France had fought to win power. Citizens are the people who live in a city or town. And now they use it. Castles were burned, laws were changed, and rich and powerful nobles died. And what kind of people are noble people? Nobles? Nobles are people of a noble rank, like lords, king, queen, and princess and prince. These kind of people are called nobles. They have noble or maybe royal ranks. Their heads cut off by that terrible new machine of death, the guillotine. Can you guess what kind of machine is a guillotine? Yeah, look at it. This is a guillotine, a machine that is used to behead people. It was used in the past to cut off the head of criminals. In Paris, the king was put in prison, and in 1792, the people of France sent him to the guillotine. It means they executed the king with the guillotine as well. The French Revolution was now three years old, but there were more years of terror to come. Terror means extreme fear. Not all of the rich nobles had died. Some had escaped to England. Some had even sent or brought the money to London. Some of them stayed in France and sent the money to London. And some other people went to London and brought their money with themselves before the revolution began. Telson's Bank which the French immigrants used. Immigrants are people who leave their country in order to settle in another country and permanently, not just as a visitors or as tourists, but permanently. Again, Telson's Bank, which the French immigrants used, had become a meeting place where they could hear and talk about the latest news from France. Exactly like Mr. Defarge's wine shop. Mr. Defarge's wine shop was a meeting place where French people could gather and uh, listen and to, listen to each other, talk to each other about secret matters. Telson's bank was such a place only in London. And now the rest of the story. One wet August day, Mr. Lorry the Telson's bank manager sat at his desk in the bank talking to Charles Donay. The years since Charles' marriage had seen the arrival of a daughter. So Charles Donay and Lucy now have a daughter and she's called Lucy, little Lucy, who was now nine years old. Dr. Manette had continued in good health and at the center of that warm family cycle was always Lucy, loving daughter, wife, mother, and a kind-hearted friend. Even Sydney Cartoon, though his old bad ways were unchanged, was a family friend, and very much a favorite with little Lucy. So we have a warm circle of family, with Lucy at the center. But at this moment, Charles Donay was trying very hard to persuade his old friend, Mr. Lorry, not to go to France. Uh, because of the revolution, now France is very dangerous. It's too dangerous. The weather is not good. The roads are bad. Think of your age, he said. 
because Mr. Larry wants to go to France and Charles Donay wants to discourage him. My dear Charles, said the banker, you think that, at nearly 80 years of age, I'm too old, but that's exactly why I must go. I have the experience, I know the business, my work here is too fine and to high papers that might be dangerous to our customers. And anyway, Jerry Cruncher goes with me. He'll take good care of my bo old bones. Old bones means old age. Old uh, To make old bones means to become old. I wish I could go, said Charles restlessly. And what does it mean, talking, saying something restlessly? To do something un easily in an anxious way restlessly in an anxious way charles donay continues restlessly i feel sorry for the people of france and perhaps i could help them only last night when i was talking to lucy interrupted talking to lucy repeated mr lorry you talk about your lovely wife at the same time as you talk about going to France. You must not go. Your life is here, with your family. Donny. Well, I'm not going to France, but you are, and I'm worried about you. It's, uh, it's a beautiful dialogue between two friends who care about each other. Just at the moment, a bank clerk put an old and opened a letter on Mr. Lorry's desk. And Donay, this is Donay. Sorry, these things happen. Donay happened to see the name on it. The Marquis of Every Monde. At Telson's Bank, London. Since his uncle's death, this was Donay's real name. So this letter was written and sent to Donay. On the morning of his wedding to Lucy, he had told Dr. Manette, but the doctor had made him promise to keep his name secret. Not even Lucy or Mr. Lorry knew. They don't know Mr. Donay's real name. He's not Charles Donay, he's Charles Markey, the clerk. We can't find this Markey, said the clerk. I know where to find him. Shall I take the letter? That would be very kind, said Mr. Lorry. Good, good that Mr. Lorry trusts him, and he has no trouble taking the letter. Yeah, here's a picture of Charles Donay talking to Mr. Jarvis Lorry at the Telson's bank. I know where to find him, the letter, said Donay. As soon as he had left the bank, Donay opened the letter. It was from Monsieur Gabel who had been arrested and taken to Paris. Monsieur Gabel, I think, uh, was working as a servant at Marquis Castle. I am in prison, and I may lose my life because I worked for a landowner, Marquis. Landowner who has left France, or Mark. He told me to work for the people and not against them. And I have done this, but no one believes me. They say only that I worked for an immigrant. And where is that immigrant? Oh, monsieur, please help me. I beg you. I think Gabel is their family servant, and they have imprisoned him just because he was working for a crucial family, a notorious, a family with a bad publicity. This cry for help made Donay very unhappy. After the death of Marquis, he had told Gabel to do, to do his best for the people. But now Gabel was in prison just because he was employed by a nobleman. It was clear to Donay that he must go to Paris he did not think that he would be in danger, as he had done everything he could to help the people of his village. Uh -huh. So 
He has done a lot to the people of the village. He thought to himself that people may welcome him. He hoped that he would be able to save his old servant. And this is going to be a very difficult journey if he really plans to do it. The night Charles Donnay sat up late, writing two letters. One was to his wife, Lucy. The other was to her father, Dr. Manette. He's really leaving. He told them where he had gone and wh why, and he promised that he would write to them from France. He had left secretly. He wrote to save them from wearing. The next day he went out without saying anything to them about his plans. He kissed his wife, maybe for the last time, or at least he won't be able to kiss his wife for a long time, and his daughter, the little Lucy, and said that he would be back soon, and that's a lie, and then he began his journey to Paris. And now the journey begins. When he arrived in France, Donay found that he could travel only very, very slowly towards Paris. The roads were bad, and every town, every village had its citizens with guns who stopped all travelers, asked them questions, looked at their papers, made them wait or threw them in prison, turned them back or sent them on the way. Now the violence of the revolution is turning against the people themselves. And it was all done in the name of freedom. And the new, the new freedom of France. How can it be freedom? Because you are stripping people of their freedom. Donai soon realized that he could not return back until he had reached Paris and proved himself to be a good citizen, not an enemy of the people. On his third night in Paris, in France, he was woken by an official and three other men with guns. Official is anyone with an office job or governmental job and they have duties and responsibilities such as a police officer or any governmental jobs alike. Immigrant, said the official, these three soldiers will take you to Paris and you must pay them. This is so rude. Donne could only obey and at three o'clock in the morning he left with three soldiers to guard him. Even with them, he was sometimes in danger. Some people in the towns and villages all seemed to be very angry with the immigrants. But finally they arrived safely at the gates of Paris. They are guarding him toward Paris and this is, very, this is not bad, this seems good. Okay, continue. Donai had to wait a long time while officials carefully read, uh, the, read his paper, which explained the reasons for his journey. One, one official, seeing Gabelle's letter, looked up at Donai in great surprise, but said nothing. Another official asked gruffly, Are you every moon? Yes, replied Donai. You will go to prison of law fools. Why? This is insane. But why? asked Donai. Under what law? We have New laws every month, said the official sharply. And immigrants have no rights. You will be held in secret. Take him away. In secret. Now Lucy and Dr. Manette want to know what has happened to Donay. As Donay left, the first official said quietly to him, are you the man who married to the daughter of Dr. Manette? So, this is a person who already knows Dr. Manette and Lucy? Yes, replied Donai in surprise. 
My name is Dufage. Good, a friend. And I have a wine shop in Saint Antoine. Perhaps you have heard of me. Yes, my wife came to your house to find her father. Why did you come back to France? It will be very bad for you. Come on, help him. Lucy is your friend, and this is Lucy's husband. Donna was taken to the prison of La Force and put in a cold, empty room with a locked door and bars across the windows. Oh, come on. He thought of Dr. Manette and his many years alone, forgotten in the Bastille. Now I too have been buried alive. He thought. I'm pretty sure that someone will come to save you in next chapters. I wish we should just sit and read and follow their stories with patience. I'm a little angry and nervous because of oh, what has happened to Charles Donnet. This revolution of France is getting too violent and it's actually restricting people's freedom rather than offering freedom. It's actually putting people in danger. They are imprisoning innocent people. The violence of French Revolution is being used against people rather than corrupted governors and royal and noblemen. Now, do you know the meaning of these vocabulary, these words? Because we went through them one by one once reading the meaning of nobles, guillotine, terror, immigrants, citizens, old bones, restlessly and official. And here is the time that we want to say goodbye. I sign off and I will be back in the next video reading chapter 8 to you. So until next video. So long.